President Xi was here in Washington, he stood in the Rose Garden with President Obama and said, China will not militarize in the South China Sea. But there is every evidence, every day, that there has been an increase of militarization of one kind or another. Uh, it's a serious concern. One of the hammer points for most of the Republican presidential candidates is that Barack Obama has been at the helm of a potentially disastrous downsizing of the American military, and that we are at a stage where doing anything but spending more money on the military could have disastrous consequences. But let's cut the difference here from those who say spending more is not the answer, but spending wisely is what we need to be talking about. And the issue creeps up at a time when the Chinese are moving their pieces around the South China Sea in what could be just the next step in a very dangerous game. Our guest is the former Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force. Welcome retired four-star General John Jumper to the hard line. General, thank you so much for joining us, and I want to begin right there with China and dovetail off Secretary Kerry's comments. China has put surface-to-air missiles to some of these contested islands, and they said we wouldn't do it. Now they've done it. But just the fact that we see this happening, is this not the reason why? We have got to focus on the military. We have got to make sure that we don't get beat numerically, monetarily, whatever, we've got to make sure we have what we need to get the job done. Vlad, that's, uh, that's exactly right. I think we've lost the edge in, our, in our, uh, a lot of our conventional deterrence. Uh, we watched this ratcheting up of tensions uh, in the region. It also instructs us that the, uh, all the tensions in the world are not about ISIS in the Middle East. Uh, we have to pay attention to the global uh, environment, and this is one more example of uh, China departing from what was a legal sort of freedom of navigation issue now into a power struggle. What you said, this is not all about ISIS in the Middle East. I think that doesn't get said enough because we have things like this happening right under our nose. Okay, so here comes the average Joe Beer can here. We get it, General. We've got to worry about what happens with ISIS. They are immediate. They're terrorists. They want to kill us here. We know we've got China sitting here. So how do we separate it then? What are the military minds? What should they be doing at the Pentagon right now to try and keep us safe and focus on this and keep America focused on these other dangers? It's not just the Pentagon. This is the, all the instruments of power of the United States, uh, of the United States of America. There are other agencies out there where we put financial, economic, commercial uh, pressure on these situations. Diplomacy. Uh, I think uh, we watched the erosion of respect for the United States from around the world. Uh, and uh, so it's getting back to all of these elements, not just the military, using them in a thoughtful way. And that's what, uh, that's what uh, I support Jeb Bush for. He has thought these through, and he is the guy, I think, who understands this better than anyone. You talk about America needing to get respect back. We hear that a lot. I agree with you. Others will agree with you wholeheartedly. But a simple question then is, is getting respect the only way to get it around the world? Is it the end of the barrel of a gun? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, as I said, we need to, to use all elements of our national power, diplomacy being the first uh, the first line and uh, I think when you lose the kind of respect and we've watched it deteriorate to the extent we've seen it deteriorate uh, you uh, you start off in the hole and uh, we need to get that back we need to restore our diplomatic power uh, we need to back it with the uh, elements of uh, US power including the military that we've had in the past and uh, and that's how you start back on the path to credibility when you talk about diplomatic power is part of that having the stones, if you will, to sit there across from somebody who runs a country like China, like Iraq, like Pakistan, whatever, and walking away from the table and saying, that's it, bottom line, walk away, we're done. Is that what we need to get to instead of just pandering? Well, that's the, that's the extreme of it, but I, I think we've lost all that diplomatic territory in between. Uh, between uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of space between uh, uh, drawing red lines and walking away and uh, pandering. And so we, we've lost all that space in between. That's what we've got to regain. The power to negotiate, a thoughtful uh, diplomatic presence and, uh, and uh, the support of allies uh, to uh, be able to uh, uh, get us back to the table and the, with the credibility we've had in the past. Then in your mind, why is Jeb Bush the guy to do that? I think uh, Jeb Bush is the guy who understands this. Uh, he has got uh, uh, a thoughtful and written down uh, uh, policy to uh, to address our uh, national uh, strategic uh, priorities around the world. It's a global perspective. It's one that uh, is uh, is thoughtful. Uh, it has the respect of the U.S. military, uh, and it. Uh, uh, I'm sure we'll get to this in a minute, but it doesn't necessarily require 
uh, just throwing money at the uh, defense budget. It's and, more thoughtful than that. And with 60 seconds to go, you hit it. That's exactly where we're going. Ted Cruz has what he calls a more tooth, less tail approach now. He wants to increase from 4,000 aircraft, roughly from 4,000 aircraft. He wants to add maybe another 3,000 here. He wants to add more military, more service people on the ground. How do you do that and still be able to afford it? Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of distance between just uh, adding uh, platforms and, and, and infrastructure to the military. We, we've got a whole lot we can do just taking advantage of the uh, information technology and the power of integration with the platforms we already have that we haven't done yet. Uh, again, a thoughtful approach to make the military more compatible with the wars that we're fighting today rather than just uh, uh, replacing old platforms with like systems that were really built for the Cold War. This is the thoughtful approach that Jeb Bush has. And, and 30, this is where we've got to go. 30 seconds left. Does that not mean spending the money wisely, which we it never does. hear a candidate say out loud? It does. It does mean spending the money wisely. And uh, if you look at the defense budgets uh, today, they're considerably more than, for instance, when I became chief of staff of the Air Force in 2001. Uh, it's hard to argue that we'd need a lot more money. We certainly need more funding to rebuild the military, but in a thoughtful way that leverages the information technology and the other technologies that we already have. Boy, if we could just get somebody to actually do that, how wonderful it would be, especially when you talk about the international and the, uh, the, the electronic technology, if you will, that we are constantly behind on every single day. General John Jumper, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. We absolutely will talk again, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, his is the name used every single day by Republican candidates as the icon of conservatism. But does Ronald Reagan truly resonate with today's voters? We'll ask that question next on The Hardline.